Welcome to Speak for Yourself, presented by Hyundai. Marcel Swally here with Emmanuel Acho. What's up, bro? We changing it up? I had to loosen things up a little bit. Can you just spin for the camera a little bit? Y'all got to see the back of this you see thing. The, you see the flowers. Ooh. You see the flowers. The floor ready. arrangement on that back. <laughs> I love it. But let's get it started with a beast, Lamar Jackson, who recently said he's, quote, tired of going home in the playoffs. Jackson is the reigning MVP, but he's still 0-2 in the postseason. The man who Lamar is constantly compared to is our own Michael Vick, who gave his thoughts on what Jackson needs to improve on in the 2020 season. Vick said, quote, playoff play. Last year was a bit disappointing in the playoffs because I knew the Baltimore Ravens will be in the AFC Championship game, and that game just didn't look good. Lamar is very accurate. His mental retention is through the roof. He's a guy you can win with. So, Acho, is it Super Bowl or bust for Lamar this season? Bruh, Super Bowl or bust, my guy. Think about it. Uh, it is? Uh, it is. Yes? It is. What? But these aren't my words. These are Lamar Jackson's words, no, don't do sir. It. Don't do 2018, it. when they drafted him, you want to know what Lamar said? What? He said, they about to get everything out of me. Er, they about to get a Super Bowl out of er, me. Er, Believe that. Yeah. That's what Lamar Jackson said. Week 12 of the season, Lamar Jackson said... I'm trying to win a Super Bowl. I don't care too much about the MVP. Mm. We're taking it one game at a time, but I'm not worried about the MVP. Close quote. Just last month, <laughs> when asked about Mahomes' deal, Lam uh, Lamar Jackson said, I got to win me a Super Bowl. I got to get where he at. And he wasn't talking about that moolah, but you said <laughs> Lamar is tired, bro. You remember, I, I, I grew up in the church. It's a quote. I'm sick and tired of being sick, sick and tired. tired. I'm sick and tired of being... Y'all quoting mystical in church? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what we do in the church? Okay, it was quoted in church first. <laughs> Look, Lamar Jackson, he realizes that is Super Bowl or bust. Mm. So I'm not going to sit here and lower the bar for him mm. and try to say, no, he just has to win a couple games. <sighs> he just has to win a playoff game. I understand that several quarterbacks didn't win the big one until later in their career. Yeah. But we also have to understand that Lamar Jackson isn't several quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson is putting threats on defense based on his arm, but he's also enhancing that threat because of his legs. We've seen the legs wither away as running quarterbacks mm. start to get older. So Lamar Jackson, ceiling is a lot higher, but his window is a lot narrower. Ooh. And the pressure for me, I'm putting it on the Super Bowl or bust type of season because that window is narrower, even though his ceiling is high. He just gave me a bibliography. What was all that, like, Lamar Jackson quote from one month and uh -huh. one month and one uh -huh. month? And so right now, this moment, you want to say that it's Super Bowl or bust. Right. I just want to make it clear. You want to say that right all now. All day. Timing is everything. Mm -hmm. Now, when he goes to the podium and gives you player podium talk, you know to take that with a grain of salt. You got to do that, appease the fan base, pander, pander, pander. That's what you have to do as an active player. I get all that. But when I say timing is everything, I want you to say that Lamar Jackson, as you quoted, is not just like any other quarterback. He's special. He's he is. different, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. How different? Is he a top five all-time quarterback? Not yet. Not yet? No. But you know, there was a top five all-time quarterback by the name of Peyton Manning. And old Peyton Manning. It took him a while. It, 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 oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, it took him longer than Lamar Jackson. And not only did it take him longer than Lamar Jackson, he struggled in the moments that Lamar Jackson had. I look at it right now. Peyton Manning's first three. Oh, God. First go. three go. playoff appearances. Donut in terms of wins. Hmm. Three losses. Hmm. Lamar Jackson's 0-2 right now. Lower completion percentage by the Peyton Manning, one of my favorite players ever. And the touchdown to interception ratio was worse for Peyton Manning. And his quarterback rating, Peyton Manning's quarterback rating in the playoffs, worse than Lamar Jackson's. Lamar Jackson just had a stroke of bad luck twice. One is, one is, I'm on the bench when the season starts as a rookie, and then y'all need me to come save my coach's job, replace a franchise quarterback, oh, and go out there and win playoff games. And maybe you're asking a little too damn much. Come back the next offseason, you said I still couldn't throw. I was a receiver or a running back, and I just light the league up to having the most passing touchdowns. And then I'm out there, second best in the pocket, and you tell me we're going to run our system, run is the key word, our system and game plan in the playoffs. And what happened? You come in with a compromised running game. No Mark Ingram like we know Mark Ingram. And then all of a sudden, coach, who just got his job saved by this quarterback, said, I'm going to put it all on you because you just saved me last time. 59 pass attempts? And they aborted their game plan. They aborted the mission. And that's what compromised Lamar Jackson more than anything. All I'm saying is, you wait for Lamar Jackson in the playoffs next time, it's not Super Bowl or bust. 
is just play better and make it culminate into a team win. Ladies and gentlemen, you know that there is a problem when one of us is up here talking and the other one starts oh, screaming. Right. You. <laughs> That's so when, like, it don't matter how much we try to keep our cool, just ooh, know, ooh. if I'm never up here talking and Marcellus start going, I know I'm in trouble. Mm. And that just happened to my dog, Marcellus, because he said... Lamar had bad luck twice. And while I'm a Lamar fan and I would like to side with you, there's also a phrase, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Because now I believed in you for the second time. Ooh. Lamar Jackson, the first time I'm going to give you against the Chargers, that was just a terrible He had to play him twice in three weeks. I'm going to give you that. Stop But that. then after the Titans, I'm like, ah. And yes, people uh, will say, well, Lamar had 500 total yards. Yes, he did. Sure he did. But let's look at the yards because there's something called hidden yardage. Although he had... 500 or so total yards, he only had like six yards an attempt compared to his nearly eight yards an attempt in the regular season. So we look at all these gaudy stats and these big yards, but remember, passing for a lot of yards doesn't typically indicate your team's success winning. Dak Prescott, Jameis Winston, Phillip Rivers, Matt Ryan, all quarterbacks who passed for a ton of yards but didn't win a ton of games. So I look at that and I'm like, okay, that's a problem. But I want to show y'all something. Can we throw up this full screen of Lamar in the regular season versus Lamar in the postseason? Because this? this is a problem. Lamar in the regular season, oh, he balled in 19 Beast. Three. Beast. Beast. Completion percentage, 63. Beast. Mm. Touchdown interception, 42 to 9. Passer rating. But then you get to the postseason. 0-2, oh, that's the first problem. 51% completion percentage, 3-3 three and three touchdown interception ratio. So you see the problem, Marcellus, is Super Bowl or bust right now because at least I need to see a playoff win. And after a playoff win, I need to see a Super Bowl because that's what Lamar told me. These ain't my, these are Emmanuel Lacho words now. Wow. I'm just the messenger of what they say. Wow. Don't, don't, shoot, the <laughs> don't shoot the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Look, I'm not a violent man, but I'll beat his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna shoot you, but I'm gonna beat you up right now with this argument. Here's the thing. You, you left one column out on that full screen. What it, column? It would have been Peyton Manning's numbers, which are even worse than Lamar Jackson's. And that's Peyton Manning. But if you were the general manager, if you were the great Bill Polian, mm -hmm. dare you try to knock down his statue. I dare you try. If you were the great Bill Polian after two games, you would have went up to Peyton Manning and said, it's Super Bowl or bust. And Peyton Manning would have, you know what he would have done? He would have busted. Let me, let me he has you. three straight playoff because, losses. Because you're, you're confusing some people right now, and I'm, I've let you get away with it twice, but... Are you really going to compare Peyton Manning, who we know is the greatest cerebral quarterback of all time, greatest cerebral quarterback of all time, to Lamar Jackson, who has clearly proven himself to be a great thrower, clearly proven himself to be cerebral, but he is the greatest athlete at quarterback of all time. Now, I'm not sitting here making the Lamar Jackson's just an athlete comparison. That's not what I'm doing. Mm. But we know that Lamar Jackson is a bigger threat because of his athleticism. Mm. You're really drawing a parallel right now mm. between the statue 6'5", Peyton Manning mm. cerebral, and Lamar Jackson, who we know has his greatest <laughs> asset, which is his athleticism, is a depreciating asset. Whoa, wait a minute. Which one had greater expectations coming into the league? Peyton Manning. Okay, all right. And then they didn't even say Super Bowl or bust to Peyton Manning. But you go say it to Lamar Jackson? Oh, excuse me. How dare you do that when he saved the franchise, he saved the coach's job, he saved the team. The arrow's pointed up because of him. But it's now Super Bowl or bust. Unfortunate and unfair. 24 different quarterbacks have started Super Bowls in the 2000s. Mm -hmm. How many of those have won a Super Bowl in their first three seasons? You would think, mm, by listening to you, most of them. Hell no, 29%. Seven. Seven of those guys have been in the Super Bowl. It's not Super Bowl or bust. Context matters. You keep talking about hitting yards. I don't know. I, I've been on the field before. I was a running back, too. Ain't no hitting yards. Every yard I earned, damn it, and you <laughs> saw it. Look, this dude went out there and passed for 300-plus yards and ran for 100-plus yards. You know how many guys have done that in NFL history in the playoffs? You know how many? How many, sir? Donut! Stop saying the Super Bowl a bust, man. This dude is just on a trajectory to go up. Well, speaking of bust, let's talk about Marcellus's Clippers, shall we? Uh, they were upset by the Suns on Tuesday. Yes, the same Suns who were near the bottom of the Western Conference. But that bad man, Devin Booker. Mm. Yeah, you've seen him. He had a game-winning turnaround mm. jumper for the win on Marcellus' mm. face, along with Kyrie, uh, Kawhi yeah, and yeah, Paul yeah, George. Yeah, whatever. The Clippers are now 1-2 and two in the NBA bubble. So, Marcellus, Mr. Clip City yourself, how do you feel after seeing the Clippers take a loss to the Suns? <laughs> Oh, damn. Mm -hmm. I know. He's speechless. You know? <laughs> he is spe I just want y'all to get that on camera. He is speechless. I, I, 
I felt better. Let's <laughs> just say there's been arguments that I've walked into with a little more confidence than this one. <laughs> there's been nights that I've had better sleep than last night. I don't feel my best right now. Mm -hmm. I I'm going to fake it till I make it. You got to. Uh, but I just want everyone to know that. What? What? What, what do you want my, us to know? My first, my first Wileyism, I feel, <laughs> that needs to be <laughs> spoken on is regular teams. Oh, God. Care about oh, the regular God. season. Oh, God. But when you're special, I can't, I can't, you I don't can't, give I a can't, damn. I can't. And look, I don't know how you, I know you moved from New York I to can't. Austin, Texas, and now you're in LA. And maybe some things have gotten lost in the mail, but you didn't get the memo that we lost to Phoenix already in October. We lost to them on the 26th in October. And y'all didn't say the sky was falling then. So why is the sky gonna fall can't. now on my I, clippers? No, no, you know. no, 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 oh, no. Okay. At what point, Marcy? Marcellus, or the Lakers gonna care? I can't, I, I can't stand you, bro. Because here's what Marcellus does. I don't know. Every time the Clippers lose, it's care. the regular season. It we is. don't care. We don't, we don't care. Mm. Bruh, mm. the playoffs start in two weeks. Uh-huh. In two weeks, them joints start. Mm -hmm. At what point are Clippers fans, you, sir, personally gonna say, you know what? I can't keep casting these blames elsewhere. Because here's what's gonna happen. The Clippers gonna lose in about the second round, and Marcellus gonna be like, Man, see, y'all didn't realize we didn't even care about 2020. Mm. We really playing for 2021. <laughs> see, that's that's the kind of guy you are. At what point are these Clippers? Oh, are God. you actually going to give them the 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 blame mm. that they deserve? Because right now, yeah. they're letting people down. Look, look, you want me to create a false sense of urgency? I'm sorry, I can't do Is that. Is there not urgency? There's not the urgency. Playoff start August 17th. Is Look, there not urgency? Our seed is set. And remember that number two seed, you know, something like that. Number two seed is better than that number one seed. I already broke you down last time about this conversation. Let's say this about my Clippers. Our leader has not only walked the walk, but talked the talk of this regular season is regular. I know how to do this. Now, Everyone knows, and you brought up the Bible earlier and going to church, we know that you got to have faith. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's difficult to hold on but, to that. But, but, uh, 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 oh, but here comes the Bible faith. son. <laughs> faith without works is dead. Yes. And right now, the Clippers ain't doing no work. And you know what? This work wouldn't matter no matter what. I remember a team breaking a regular season record for wins. Oh, oh my. here you go. They're, here they're you go. Here remember, you go. they won 73 here games, and everybody said they can't lose. And they got into the finals and found out the hard way that all that don't matter. And then Kawhi, who went through the same thing last year in Toronto. What's going on? I thought Kawhi was great. What's up? Why is Toronto not so good? What had happened was they win a championship. You can't turn the light on Unless it's time to turn the light on if you're an NBA team, especially an NBA champion like Kawhi Leonard. So it all comes downhill. Let me say this. Mm -hmm. When we started this show, you know, we got the call from the agents and the bosses and Nacho. Wow, like, oh, I'm pumped. And then we came in here and we had to do some, some, some test runs, right? Absolutely. I don't know about you, dog, but I... I I don't want to say I mailed it in, but it wasn't the same. <laughs> it was a little off the fastball, if you know what I'm That's saying. Facts. facts, right? That's the same thing with the Clippers. Just a little off the fastball. Phoenix, for whatever reason, a little Achilles heel, a little gnat to us. Get away from us. Leave us alone. Lakers, oh, we want y'all. We see y'all coming all day. That's all I got. <laughs> Here's my thing. I got, I got two problems with what you said. You talked about that Golden State team, that 73 win Golden State oh, team. Oh, did they win the championship? No, nah, but who they lose to? LeBron and the Lakers, but I'm not going to go there. They knew right LeBron and the right Lakers. Not, not, well, LeBron. <laughs> not LeBron and the Lakers. They lost to LeBron. This is who I'm arguing with. They lost to LeBron. <laughs> they lost to one guy. Oh, uh, yeah, the one guy who you should be afraid of. Uh, but was, more, more and most importantly, I'm humble enough to take some blame, Marcellus. I am. Uh -oh. Because here's the thing I believed you when you spoke. <laughs> That's the problem I made, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to make a public apology to you, and I'm going to make a public apology to you because I was foolish enough to believe Marcellus Wiley mm. when he told me the Clippers are gods. <laughs> the Clippers have descended from on high, and they will run the entire NBA. Oh, the Clippers oh, will yeah. run through the Lakers. Oh, yeah. The oh, Clippers yeah. will run through the Rockets. Oh, the yeah. Clippers will run oh, yeah. through anybody they play. I believed you. And so right now, Marcellus, I just want to sincerely apologize oh. to you for being dumb enough 
foolish enough and naive enough to believe you when you told me who the Clippers were. Because wow. I've now seen who they really are. Wow, you're hard on yourself. We need to hang a little more I'm after sorry. the show. I'm sorry. I gotta pick it's you my back fault. up. Man, hold on. You understand that you're not going to see this coming. Today's NBA, you're not going to see the champion coming unless it's Durant, Steph, and Clay all healthy. If, if it's not that, it's just going to zigzag. Like we said, LeBron and the Cavs, we didn't see that coming. Who and didn't? They went, he, went, he went to eight straight. Wherever LeBron goes, the dude is going to go to the chip. To beat a 73 win Golden State team. I don't doubt LeBron. Myself. I don't Woo! doubt LeBron. Woo! This I don't doubt LeBron, LeBron. But I want you to know, when you're in situations like the Clippers, and everyone knows there's a target on our back. How? And, and the Clippers have not won in Clippers history. So you don't We're believe target. you don't believe me right target? now? Watch target? this. Watch this celebration in the You're about bubble. to make me tear up this paper. Can you watch the screen and look at this? If you don't think there's a target on our back, what is that? What championship did you win in game three of the bubble? Game winner. Let him, let, him let, him let him celebrate. Let him celebrate. Oh, so you celebrate he like that celebrated just for the, the game winner. Regardless of, if, he would have celebrated the same way regardless. So if you win a championship, what's the difference in celebration? You can't do that. No they would have gave him the good wine. They would have <laughs> gave him the good wine. <laughs> that, that wasn't the good stuff. That wasn't the good stuff. Get out of my face. That was water. Hey, everybody that was, that was knows Pellegrino. the top of the mountain. You got to go through the Clippers if you're going to climb up there where we are. Coming up. Amari Cooper made a bold prediction for the Cowboys. We'll tell you if Dak Prescott can make it a reality. Next, Speak for Yourself, presented by Hyundai. Mm. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself, wow. presented by Hyundai. Let's head to Dallas, where the Cowboys gave Dak Prescott another offensive weapon by drafting C.D. Lamb in the first round. Amari Cooper called it a great pickup, then said along with Michael Gallup, they can each have 1,000-yard receiving seasons in 2020, which has only happened five times in NFL history. We're joined now by everybody's favorite. NFL analyst LeVar Arrington. But Marcellus, I'm going to go to you first, my guy. Yes. You confident Dak can deliver on Amari's prediction? Oh, I'm confident. Uh, and look, knowing my mentality and my mindset and knowing Dak Prescott, uh, we're the most confident when it's most uncomfortable. Think about this situation right here as a testimony once again of against all odds, you know, Dak Prescott is a rose that grew from the concrete. Mm -hmm. Think about oh, this. Lord. Oh, this no. is a guy who's looked at it impossible Come and laughed Tupac. at it. What? No, I'm going to go Jay-Z. Forget Tupac. Oh, okay. This Jay ain't no tall order. This is nothing to me. Mm. Difficult takes a day, impossible oh, takes, takes a, a week. I hear you, Marcellus. You're wrong, but I hear you. Because <laughs> Dak Prescott is sitting there like, y'all think this is impossible? Oh, I'm ready for this. You know what sounds impossible? That a 29-year-old will be co-hosting a daily show. Oh, but it's happening. What sounds impossible is that Whitlock could last months on one meal a day. But that dude is doing it. You know You're what stupid. sounds impossible? So that Dak Prescott <laughs> would make double what Patrick Mahomes makes in the next three years. But it is all reality. This is a guy who threw for 4,900 yards with a gun to his head, and everyone's saying, you're nothing but a system game manager. And he went out there and proved everyone wrong. Now, you're going to set another obstacle for the guy who was a rookie and took over for Tony Romo, franchise quarterback, and went out there and won 13 games his rookie year? Keep setting these obstacles up for Dak to knock down, and Dak's going to do it once again. <sighs> I hear you, Marcellus. Yeah, I got the you on the ropes. The confidence level is not high here, and I'll tell you who the confidence level isn't high with. It's with one of Amari, Mr. Amari Cooper. And, and think about last year, right? Week 16, game was on the line. It was fourth down and eight, I believe, oh, and they were down 17 He's prepared today. Right, the game is ready to be won by the number one receiver. It had to be won by one Dak Prescott and the number one receiver. Only problem is that pass right there was to Gallup, not to Amari Cooper. You know where Amari Cooper was? Where he was at? On the sideline. Uh -oh. On the sideline. Uh -oh. You realize that Amari Cooper sitting there on the bench right there, dejected, while Gallup walks off after the game is all but lost and the season all but lost. Mm. Now you come back and you say, oh, we brought in <laughs> C.D. Lamb. Woo, beast. We got Gallup. Beast. I'm here. I'm confident. We all going to get 3,000 yards, all of us together. We all going to get 3,000 together, and my man Dak Prescott's going to deliver. Well, that's interesting because you put the target of confidence on one Dak Prescott's back while 
what you're saying really exposes the fact that you truly aren't confident that Dak may be confident in you. Ooh. So to me, Ooh. I'm not confident in this prediction because the confidence level that Amari Cooper, it, the lack thereof by making this public statement and knowing if we pay attention to the history of it, would you have confidence in your number one receiver after that being the game that costed mm. you your season? I don't buy it. I don't see it. Amari does not want to be left behind, and therefore he made the argument as such to put the, the, the pressure on Dak to deliver with Amari included. LeVar, I respect you, bro, because wow. you came prepared you. today. Today. My Thank dog you. has that Thank next you. level well, thinking. Today. But I'm going to rock with my dog Marcellus in quoting the great philosopher Jay-Z. No, 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 because a great okay. philosopher Jay-Z later in that song said, I'm not a businessman. See, I'm a business man. Oh. And Dak right. is a business okay. Man, he understands. He got money on the line this season because it's franchise tag time. That's and right. if it's franchise tag time, it's time to deliver. Last year, Dak Prescott realized he was playing for everything, so he had to ball out. Boom. He threw a 1,000 more yards than he ever had in his highest previous season. So Dak Prescott realizes, uh-oh, it's go time. That means I got to go. Now, he also <laughs> has Amari Cooper. Amari's only had less than 1,000 yards once in his career. Michael Gallup, 1,000-yard season last year in year two, and he's ascending. C.D. Lamb, if you know anything about where that dude came from, University of Oklahoma, he's a beast. He's a lot to get himself 1K. But the real reason I think Dak is going to get his yards is because that's what Dak Prescott does. He, he consistently, his trajectory, gone upward the last four years. The issue, though, Cowboys fans, Hello. before you think I'm singing your praises too, too much, remember, top five passers last year by yardage. None of those teams made the playoffs. I said it earlier, but I'll say it again. You had Jameis, you had Phillip Rivers, you had Dak Prescott, you had Jared Goff, you had Matt Ryan. So just because Dak balls does not necessarily insinuate or imply <laughs> that the Cowboys will ball. However, LeVar, Dak Prescott okay. going to get his because he got to get his, and he got all the weapons out there to do it. So I think it's a shoe in that Dak fulfills Amari's prediction. Look, LeVar, that was a hammer. I love that. That, that. that is Thank a real lane that we can have another conversation about. <laughs> yes, over it is. There, over there giving that false hope and that love and that pressure on somebody mm -hmm. kind of deflects. Mm -hmm. I like that. But I want to stick to Dak and, and talk about his confidence and why this actually wasn't even trying to poke at Dak or expose Dak or put absurd expectations on Dak. This was a low-key shot at Jason Garrett, if you really want to go there. Because mm. if you look at Jason Garrett, a lot of guys in this locker room are feeling the trampoline effect of Mike McCarthy in the building. Don't forget who Mike McCarthy is. Even though Jason Garrett did help the Dallas Cowboys have some successful offenses, including the number one in terms of yards last year, Mike McCarthy, boy, his first 11 seasons, nine of them top 10 offenses. Hey, you didn't hear of Aaron Rodgers until you heard of Mike McCarthy and Aaron Rodgers. That's how great he is respected in terms of being an offensive mind. So I think right now they're looking at it like, look, five times in NFL history, we've had trios, all of the guys having 1,000 yards. Why can't we be number six? And if you look at it from that perspective, they have the talent. Mm -hmm. They have the motivation. They have the quarterback who's ascending. So all things considered, you got the coach. You're going to have the system, Kellen Moore, now in his second year. He started off fast last year, got a little exposed. He'll recover from that. And then you got Dak, who's not only playing with house money, but trying to get all the franchise money he can get. I think it's a fully motivated, talented bunch that could make it happen. You know, it's interesting because last year, Dak was just shy of making how many yards throwing? Five. How many? Y'all know? Five K. He was right. He Five was K. right, right, right there. And was at home, as as Mr. Macho Acho explained <laughs> so eloquently. Whatever. He was right at home. So there was one thing, and I'm glad you brought up Mike McCarthy, Marcellus. I'm glad you did that because I was thinking about all that time that Mike McCarthy was with Aaron Rodgers and all of the development that took place and all of the passing. But do you know the one thing that we always discussed that Mike McCarthy was looking for throughout most of his career in Green Bay? Massages. What? <laughs> uh, well, a running back. All right. Oh, yeah. So maybe that's the same thing. A running back will massage you and make you feel good about yourself. Yeah, yeah, nice little rock. stiff rub on your shoulders, right? <laughs> Chill. <laughs> he's got that. Ah, he's got that in Dallas right now. So now it goes to a whole nother equation of thought that you have to think about in saying, Maybe 
the idea of Dak Prescott being a much better and efficient quarterback is not having to reach just under 5,000 yards mm. of passing mm. to go sit at home and watch the playoffs on the couch. Just maybe, mm. like everyone was screaming at the television during shows, is get your Run running the attack Run on the, the game. Mm. Get your running game going. So I don't see Dak Prescott having to be this world beater of a passer under Mike McCarthy because Mike McCarthy is coming to the table right now with a nice size offensive line that that needs some some new motivation to go out there and move some bodies and, and make things happen. But you also got Ezekiel Elliott, who's in that backfield, starving, waiting. He always shows you how he's eating. He's always eating. <laughs> They're going to have to feed that million-dollar man, that million-dollar baby, that rock. And I may take some of those passing yards and opportunities away. So again, I think it's a deflection. I don't feel confident that there will be a 3,000 yard season with all three of those guys getting somewhere in and around those numbers. And I think Amari made it very apparent that he does not want that that focus to go too far away from that. All I got to do is one correction. Hey, y'all need to stop uh, taking shots at Dak Prescott because only one quarterback in this league had headlines that read NFL's best deep ball passer. Um, NFL.com did a piece on Dak Prescott, who had seven touchdowns of 40 plus yards last year, only second to the potential GOAT in Patrick Mahomes. So y'all need to put some respect on Dak. He can do this, and he can do it easily. Well, speaking of and guys he was sitting who, at home. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of guys who catch deep touchdowns, how about Odell Beckham? Mm. Coming up, we're going to talk OBJ. Mm. He seems mentally checked out on the upcoming season. We'll tell you if the Browns should be worried about his mindset. Next, Speak for Yourself, presented by... Welcome back to Speak for Yourself, presented by Hyundai. Let's talk Odell Beckham Jr., who recently told the Wall Street Journal... With the ongoing, ongoing pandemic, he didn't feel the season should happen, and he wouldn't mind not having it. Browns GM Andrew Berry said he has spoken to Odell, and he has, quote, really focused on having a great year. Joined once again by Uncle LeVar Arrington. We'll talk about that later. But I took I'm coming to you. Should the Browns be concerned with Odell's mindset? They should be concerned, but I'm going to say it like this. I think Odell's the best receiver in the league when he's healthy and when he's locked in. Maybe because I played against him personally. Maybe my expectations for OBJ are just too high. Mm. But when you think about Odell, I, I, I heard, I remember somebody telling me once, you got to be where your feet are. Well, what's that mean, Nacho? I mean, if you are physically there, then mentally you should be there as well. I'm concerned if Odell is actually going to be at uh, 76 Lou Groza Boulevard, if that's the mm. Browns facility, because of what he said. But I'm also concerned because Odell been in the league six years now. His first three years, crazy stuff, 288 receptions. His last three years, 176 receptions. Last three years compared to the first three, almost 2,000 yards less and 20 less touchdown catches. But you know what really gave it away when I thought about Odell's mental state? Because, Marcellus, you're a married man, and I've picked up some things from you when listening to you as that's of late. That's right, that's right. What it's I've learned is when people make drastic hair changes, something's typically going on mentally. And remember Odell. Oh, don't do this. 2019, I think it was July 11th, my dog came out to the ESPYs with a fresh fade. I'm like, Odell, <laughs> what's going on, bro? You changed the whole culture with the blonde tips. All of a sudden, my dog got a fresh fade. That's when I knew, gentlemen, there was something emotionally going on. I still don't think it's been corrected, people. Four head coaches in the last four seasons. Odell going through some things. Hey, dog, man, y'all should be concerned. <laughs> I got to take it a different place than that. I, wait, you really put that Am I wrong? into hair Am I wrong? color? Am I wrong? Hella wrong. Now, Hella you, wrong. You telling me people don't change their hair when they going through something? Don't they open do. up the night, They bro. definitely do. Talk to me, they LeVar. Do. Or they definitely no, don't. They do. I used they to have do. the big daddy he came with the conk on top with the curly tips. You and guess what? No choice, I rocked the Michael Jordan the next day, hey, and, hey, and hey, I was the uh, same no. dude. Lamar said it right, though. You well, had no you choice, didn't have okay? The choice. Your hair chose your you. Hair you didn't choose your hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. No. Yeah. I'm not, a good, not a good one. I'm going to tell you. Shut your oh. trap. I'm going to no. tell you what's really at play here. What's at play here is how we're once again trying to muzzle our stars. Mm. What Odell is doing here, and unfortunately, you're not supposed to do this when you're a superstar, is actually tell the damn truth. 
You're not supposed to be transparent. How dare you? We know how it is. When you climb the mountain of success, people want less of you because they want you to be a prisoner of that same success. So what starts to happen? Anybody? I saw it with you, LeVar Arrington, in the mall, 2000. Uh -oh. Walking uh -oh. around, Call all of a sudden you got to out. All of a sudden you got to have a couple of the homies with you. You got to have the entourage. You got to have the buffers because they actually want less of you. They just want your production. They want less of your personality, less of your mindset, less transparency. And they're trying to muzzle Odell for doing something every single player does, which is contemplate the risks and the rewards of every situation. Every day I went to practice, there was a moment sitting there on that stool. Y'all better, y'all better follow me. On that stool, tying them cleats, putting on them pads. I'm like, man, I don't really, I don't really, I don't really know. I really go <laughs> hey, through this. Really it's Wednesday. Uh, I'm about to walk out of there. It's going to be blazing hot. That uh, dude is uh, twice my size. He didn't look like he had a good day today. And guess what? He going to bring me pain. I'm going to walk back in here. Something going to be twisted, sprained, or bleeding. But when that whistle blows, yes, sir, let's go get it. It happens like that. This cocktail of fear that we talk about is nothing but anxiety and nerves. And every single player that has ever played the game contemplates what that looks like. Odell just told y'all what it looks like, and now we're going to put it on Odell. Unfair, y'all. I think they should be concerned with his mindset just for the simple fact that you can never control and probably barely could contain the star and the personality and the brand that one Odell Beckham Jr. is. And let's be clear here. I don't even know that it's even about, you know, uh, well, Odell is is not wanting to practice. He's super competitive, ultra competitive. Yes. I've, I've been around him more than enough times to know that that young man wants to get it and be the best at what it is that he's getting after. You don't ever have to question his dedication and, and his want for what this game represents to him. He's actually one of the few that people should leave alone when it comes down to a true love and obsession Great. of being the best that you that's can nice. be. And that's Odell Beckham Jr. So the reality that, that the Cleveland Browns are facing is someone who is beloved like he is, someone who is admired and followed as closely as Odell Beckham Jr. is, if you get off to a slow start and OBJ feels as though this is one of them years, this is in a lot of ways a make or break year as, as Macho uh it mentioned so well is, is that look you haven't had the greatest of of years the last three years you want to have that bounce back year this is a hard year and a lot of difficult circumstances to deal with to have that type of year so if something were to go wrong and now you got new coaches <laughs> after new coach after new coach you got new this is baker going to do that am i going to be mm. here we're in cleveland there's so many different factors and elements as to why the Browns should be concerned, but it's more of an indictment on the Cleveland Browns. Be clear, whatever you hear from Odell Beckham Jr. will most likely be an indictment on the Cleveland Browns organization, and that's what you have concern for. The, the concern mm. is like LeVar, like you mm. said, bro. Mm. Winning is contagious, a coach once told me, but so is losing. Shoot. And Odell <laughs> has lost a whole lot of games. A lot of. And eventually, that stuff like a leaky uh, ceiling is going to just start to seep into the house and erode the floors. I think Odell realizes, man, last three seasons, he's combined for 13 touchdowns. He did that in his sophomore season total. Yo. So Odell, oh, no. is he's, he, let's be real, bro. Like, he has been going through a lot. That is concerning. When you're in New York, bright lights. He's the star. He was about to be the most polarizing figure in the NFL. Let's not forget that shoe deal he signed. I think 95 M's or something like that crazy for a shoe deal alone. So Odell was on his way to be that dude. Love. And now in Cleveland, things have been rocky. I know he was hurt last year. But like uh, LeVar said, you can't understate or uh, you, you can't pay no mind to the fact of, bro, four head coaches in the last four years, Odell don't even know what he's walking into. So I completely get empathized <clears throat> with and sympathize with the fact of, Man, I'm laying it all out here. I'm in my prime. One of the best receivers talent-wise this league had ever seen. Remember, his first three years, what was it, 43 touchdowns? Like, dude had done stuff we had never seen before. Ever, ever. I think that 
I get what his mindset is or where he is coming from. Mm, good. I'm glad you did a 180 because at the beginning of this, you were trying to come at my boy. Now you respect his gangster, respect his greatness. Chill out, chill out, chill and, out. And this is one of the great dudes of the NFL. I'm talking about as a person. This is one of the great talents and one of the great competitors, as LeVar talked about. I go back and forth with Odell a lot. And one thing that I've noticed is really that prisoner of success. And it's crazy because now Odell who is a rock star for real. Like, and he's a rock star in a world where there are not many rock stars. Like, if you're a rock star for real, there's a new band coming in town with more rock stars. In the NFL, when you see us get off the bus, ain't many of us rock stars. And Odell has this mindset right now where he still wants to be the same old Odell. But we won't <laughs> allow that. We won't allow him to still be the dude who was 15 years old in the living room dancing with his mama. And then he's like, I'm on the field now. Can I just still dance like I'm with my mama? And people are like, no, you're a star. You did the one-handed catch. How dare you? You're faking the funk. And Odell's like, damn it, I'm going to keep being me. And I give him props for having that much drive, that much authenticity about who he is and trying to express it. It's just sad to see this state of affairs where everyone wants to muzzle and break down what he's saying, which is real. Coming up, the Blazers upset the Rockets last night. We'll tell if the Lakers should be worried about facing him in the playoffs. They should be worried about everybody. Next, Speak for Yourself is presented by Hyundai. Yo, welcome back to Speak for Yourself. Let's move to the NBA, where the Blazers had a big win over the Rockets last night. Portland has a strong chance for the eighth seed, which would put them up against the Lakers. Mm. L.A. has a 2-1 to one lead in the season series, but some league insiders think the Blazers are a threat to upset LeBron's squad in a potential first-round matchup. Joined by the one and only Slit Rick <laughs> NBA analyst. But Marcellus, I'm going to come to you first, big dog. Yeah. Should the Lakers fear the Blazers if the Blazers do indeed make the playoffs? This is going to be proof I do my job and I'm objective about doing it. No, they shouldn't fear no damn trailblazers coming into the building. Ah, the Lakers and the greatness of their squad and their dynamic duel. Who's going to guard LeBron if you want to really just get to it? All these N NBA insiders or NBA overthinkers are trying to make something compelling that is not really compelling. This won't be a fair matchup. No one can guard AD, period, in the NBA. Let alone, who's going to guard LeBron on the Portland Trailblazers? They don't have the size. They, Trevor Ariza's not coming into the bubble. And that was the only guy you looked at on this roster that could be able to do it. So when they talk about NBA success and playoff wins and eventual championship success. They always talk about the building blocks of that success. Let's see how Portland has been building up their confidence and ammunition to go against the Lakers. Whoa, wait a minute. Look at the Oregon trails we call it. Blazers postseason results the last seven seasons. Lost. They lost to the Warriors without KD. Ooh, swept. Look at that. Swept, swept, swept. Gentlemen sweep, gentlemen sweep, gentlemen sweep. I hate to say this, but, man, they only have one All-Star since 2015. We know who it is, Dame Lillard, my dog, Dame Dollar. C.J. McCollum's a beast. All of that said, there's no way they're going to hang in a series against the Lakers. See, here's the thing, Marcellus. I respect you now at least getting over your pride and your bias, showing some love <laughs> to the Lakers. I respect that. But the Lakers should be worried, and they should be scared, because for asking, who going to guard Braun? Who going to guard AD? What's your valid questions? Who the heck going to guard Dame? That's my real concern. Mm. On any given night, we've seen LeBron, and you've talked about it recently. Like, LeBron, if he go off, he might go off for 35. If Dame go off, Dame going <laughs> off about 45, 50. Yeah. Plus, you got CJ. Plus, you got Nurk. And then you got Melo, who's showing himself to be the Hall of Famer that he truly is all over again. I was watching the game last night, and I'm sitting here thinking, bruh, if these Blazers slide into that A spot, if they make it into the A spot, either by the play-in or whatever you may have it, they are going to pose a huge threat. Because I'm looking at the Lakers like, yo, Waiters, he not finna D up Dame. Caruso, <laughs> I know you're not about to tell me Caruso <laughs> gonna D up Dame. Ooh. And then you got CJ, who's averaging the second highest points of his career. So I look at the, the totality of the Trailblazers, and I think that the Lakers will be in big, big trouble if they got to have that matchup round one. Get them, Rick. I don't know if I can say... Two bigs. Big, big trouble. But <laughs> I'll, I'll give you this. That was as strong a case strong, as you could strong. possibly you're make strong. for the Lakers not having an issue with the Blazers, especially that first-round history. That is hard to argue with, and you are 100% right. My number one question is, 
Who is going to guard LeBron James? Nobody. All that said, there are a lot of matchups. Dame Lillard being one, as mm-hmm. Acho mentioned. But there are a lot of matchups here that are question marks for the Lakers. The Lakers' strength outside of LeBron and AD, what is it? It's their size. If there's any team that can match them and surpass them in size, it's the fact that they've got Yusuf Nurkic, they've got Zach Collins, they've got uh, Hassan Whiteside coming Mm, off the bench. mm. They can win that matchup. So it's going to go the other way. I ultimately don't believe that the Lakers are the, the Blazers have enough to win this series. But if you've looked at LeBron James and his history of getting to the finals, he's swept. It's never takes uh, any time to get through that first round. It has to be a sweep. The one year where he went seven games, they got swept out of the, out of the finals in the Warriors by the Warriors because they had nothing left at the end. The Lakers can win this. But LeBron is going to have to expend more energy at both ends. He's going to have to defend, and he's going to have to be a big-time scorer every night for them to do it. And that's a lot more energy than he has had to expend in the first round in quite some time. I think we can agree on this. Yes. Uh, Among all the teams that could be the eighth seed, (laughs) if there is any team that they should fear, the one team that they don't want to see are the Portland Trailblazers. Because Mm -hmm. everybody else, I'd be in full agreement. They're not going to pose a threat. The Blazers at least have the requisite uh, experience, roster, talent, versatility (laughs) to be able to do exactly that. To your point, Slick Rick, I'll give you that. Look, the Grizzlies, Spurs, Pelicans, Suns, Kings, none of them scare us because Dame... Uh, Us? No, us? Was that us? Yes, yes. Dame Dollar. Of all those teams, I don't want to see Dame Dollar. Back. I don't give a damn where he is. He can play with an AU team. I'm like, <laughs> I do not want to see Dame Lillard. He doesn't die easily. That said, oh, you got to excuse my boy Acho because sometimes he gets stuck in his football mindset. He forgets that in football, it's a do or die situation in the playoffs. But in basketball, it's a series. Oh, and you know why it's a series? Because it's not about your speedometer. Dame Lillard. Vroom. It's about your fuel tank. What you going to do the next time? What you going to do the next time? Oh, we got seven of these bad boys. Oh, that's a problem. That's when the Lakers just going to wear them down. If you look at the Lakers in terms of their roster, (laughs) it's just too much. Like, they have too many ways to come and attack Dame Lillard. And even if they don't slow him down, they wear him down to one day he maybe has an off night. Who's going to pick that up? You say C.J. McCollum could do it. Duh. But then the Lakers are like, we got A.D., we got Braun, and then we're going to look and say, Kuzma, whoever it may be. The point of this is you can't just watch it one game last night, my man Acho, and then all of a sudden come in here and be an NBA overthinker, calling yourself an insider. You can't do that. This team has lost seven more games than it's won. It's a 31-win team, and you're trying to say they're going to beat the number uh, one team in the West? Acho, Mar- take Marcellus, that. Acho, it's, not, take that. it's not what have you done for me, my brother. It's what have you done for me lately. So talking about what teams have done earlier in the season, it really has no bearings on what they have done as of late. Furthermore, the biggest fear I have is not being an insider. It's not being an NBA expert. It's being a guy who can read and crunch numbers. And you got Melo, Nurkic, Gary Trent Jr., Dame Dollar, C.J. McCollum, those five average more points than the entire Lakers team combined in the bubble right now. Now, that should put fear in your eyes. Coming up, Marcellus, I'm sorry, (laughs) but we have to show it again. No, chill. (laughs) We'll ask Uncle Jimmy what he thought about Devin Booker's game winner against the Clippers. Next, speak for yourself. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself. Guess we have to show this again. Damn, Devin Booker. Hit a game winner. Against my Clippers on Tuesday. Nice shot. We're joined now by Uncle Jimmy. So, how concerned should I be after the Clippers lost to the Suns? None, uh, right? Uh, no, 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 no. Hey, man, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I didn't realize how many stars that the Clippers had. And I didn't realize the star power that they had, man. I'm ta- And I'm talking about movie star power. Man. All right. Granted, we knew Kawhi was the Terminator. But, uh, you know, come on, man. How do we know? What about the mother little hobbits jumping around? <laughs> Pat Beverly. Crazy <laughs> Jack. Come on, man. Do Not something hobbits, with that team, man. We faking the punk. Me out, man. Actors. What they gonna do? That's it for Damn us. Phillies and Yankees next. <laughs>